Today we're going to talk about some cybersecurity skills I believe everyone should have. First thing on the list is going to be IOCs or indicators of compromise. This means identifying what exactly is the source of a cyber attack. It could be a website, like in this case, a file on your computer. Now, as with all of my other videos, we're going to go through this with a real example. So this is actually a malware website that we're just going to visit. But hey, how do I know if this is malware? And that brings us to the second cybersecurity skill, and that is going to be investigation. The ability to perform research and dig out the details behind something. Let's say you visit this website because a friend on Discord sent you this link. First, the website seems overly simplistic, and we're going Going to look a little bit deeper in the code by just pressing F12 and if we expand the head as you can see we've got the description we've got reference to github and we've also got some references to discord but not everyone can understand HTML but what you can do is you can always use websites like scam advisor and simply look up whatever website you're visiting so let's say we wanted to do a deeper dive into planistherapy.org it has a trust score of 56 so if we scroll down it's got a value SSL certificate, which we can also check from here with the nice lock but it's also got a paid service to hide its identity. Now, this is not uncommon. A lot of websites do that, but it also doesn't have many visitors and it's only been registered very recently. Now, this is all data that's publicly available through the ICANN record. Now, on the contrary, if we search for a website like the pcsecuritychannel.com, you're going to see instantly that we have a trust score of 100. So you know you can safely visit us. Next, against our judgment, we're actually going to download the malware, which brings us to malware analysis. There was a time when malware analysis was really difficult and you would need an expert in bytecode or assembly language to do it, but that has changed. So once we extract this belligerent exe, put it on our desktop, we can analyze it quite easily by simply going to a site like hybrid analysis, picking an operating system that we're running and generate a public report. And within a few seconds, we get a verdict that this is indeed malicious. Now you could use a variety of services, including Vars Total, but as you can see, it's not always a reliable indicator of whether or not a file is malicious if you're just relying on the detections. But you could also skip the online services and use something like PE Studio, drag and drop the file there and look for things in red, basically. Things like the program name being Windows Update Assistant, an invalid certificate and an overlay on the EXE might be suspicious. The next skill I'm gonna talk about is forensics which is the ability to take a deeper look at what's happening inside a system. You don't have to use advanced tools like volatility, but everyone can download Microsoft's SysInternals suite from sysinternals.com and learn to use a couple of basic tools like Process Explorer and TCP View. Process Explorer is gonna show you everything that's executing on your system, all of the processes, all of the DLLs, everything that's loaded, along with scan results in Vars Total. If you select it in options, TCP view, on the other hand, is going to show you every connection that your computer is making to a remote address. And using the first skill, investigation, you can actually figure out what these addresses are. So for instance, if we now run this file that we got from the website, and it's running all of these uh, different command line tools, and we can see that this particular process that we just launched has established a connection with this IP address. It's not really showing us any UI, but it's connecting and communicating with a remote address, which suggests some kind of Trojan behavior. Similarly, this particular process is loading a lot of DLLs, some of which are being detected. Views like like this can look quite intimidating to the average user, but you have to remember this is all graphic user interface. Everything is written. So you can read the process name, you can read the description, and over time you're going to familiarize yourself with what runs on your system by default so that when you run something new, you're going to be able to spot it instantly. As time goes on, I think the basic skills of being able to investigate and verify what you're looking at are going to be more and more important. Now, I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and share it if you did. Now, this video is sponsored by one of my favorite cybersecurity tools, which is Malwarebytes, a full-fledged, lightweight antivirus program that has routinely demonstrated good detection capabilities in our tests, as well as massively improved their UI recently. And if we look at settings, it has everything from ransomware and exploit protection to the ability to block pen testing attempts. 
Many of you may have heard of malware bytes as a second opinion scanner, something you use to remove malware if your system is infected, but the brand new malware bytes is actually a full on AV replacement and stops malware in real time. They recently updated their user interface. As you can see, it looks very slick in dark mode. We've done independent tests of this in the past, which you can find on the channel, and they've shown consistent improvement in the last few years. So show them some love, check them out using the link in description. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo from the PC Security Channel, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.